Hello, in this presentation, we'll record the accounting cycle for a merchandising company. Merchandising company meaning that they sell inventory. So we're going to have much of the normal stuff, the same types of transactions in the accounting cycle that we would have for a service company, which does not sell inventory. But now, of course, we have to add that factor of inventory. We will record the transactions in this presentation on this worksheet. Then we'll move to the next tab and record the adjusting entries. Then we'll create the financial statements from the adjusted draw balance. And then we will close out the accounting cycle for this uh, period being this month. So we're going to start off on this tab. It can look a little bit intimidating, but we will walk this through step by step. We're going to have the entries over here. This is what we're going to do. These are the instructions. These are the journal entries. We're going to record those journal entries in the form of a general journal in this case in the blue areas we're going to record in the blue areas for uh, these sheets for the most part and then we're going to post those transactions to the general ledger and the general ledger can look somewhat intimidating but all it is is a layout of each account giving us more detail to record once again in the blue areas for each account so we have cash we have all the asset accounts we've got the liability accounts in orange we've got the uh equity accounts and the net income accounts. So we'll record them in here and we'll show you how to do that step by step. Then uh, the general journal is creating the trial balance. So we don't need to do anything to the trial balance, but the trial balance will automatically update and show us in essence what is happening as we go and then we can analyze the trial balance. So note that the trial balance is only in one column. It is, does have debits and credits, but the credits are being represented by bracketed numbers. That will save us some space. It'll help us with some formatting in terms of the Excel worksheet. So I highly recommend thinking about debits and credits in different ways. Different types of software are going to use different types of formula to represent the debits and credits. In this case, we can see that the debits all have um, no brackets. The bracketed numbers are credits. And therefore, the debits minus the credits equal zero. So this green zero is an indication that we are in balance, meaning... That if we highlight all the debits and then we subtract all the credits they're equal because they're in balance if we use that uh, then we can use the formula function in excel which can be very useful we have net income down here which can also be calculated very easily using this format uh, obviously it's zero right now because we have no income <laughs> and no expenses and we can also see that uh, we can sum up the trial balance in the same way all these trial balance accounts all these general ledger accounts are on the trial balance and if we see what this is made up of, all the end accounts here are making up this number. So this needs to be remaining in balance. And we can also see that the trial balance is being made up from the general ledger accounts. So the general ledger is making the trial balance. We can see that connection. We'll reiterate that connection as we go. We can also see up here that the um, accounting equation is the green accounts, the assets, equal the liabilities, the orange accounts, and the equity, which are all the blue accounts. So we're going to see those balancing transactions as we go through this. So let's start recording transactions. First thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to hide some of these cells so that we can work with only the uh, part of the general journal that we want to see. So in order to hide cells, I'm going to put my cursor right on this F so it looks like that drop down. I'm going to left click, and then I'm going to highlight over to J. Let go right click on that selected section and then hide that section you don't have to do this but this could save us time in that now i can see our questions we can then see where we want to put it and then we can move over here and record it in a similar fashion uh, one of the problems with excel is that of course we're gonna have to move around and we can't always see something on one page it does get very much easier once you work with it a bit all right, so now we got the first transaction on 4-1. So I'm just going to go ahead and record 4-1 transaction. What happened? We purchased merchandise on account uh, from a company. So that's a very original in name, a company. Terms in 30. So we got to pay it back in 30 days. What's what the terms mean. And therefore, we purchased inventory. So if we look at our chart of accounts, which I would always have available, uh, we're going to see what happened. First, I always ask, is cash affected? In this case, it is not because we purchased it on account. On account means we didn't pay cash in this case. Therefore, what did we purchase it with? 
Well, we know that we purchased it with accounts payable in that case because that's kind of like our credit card, what we owe. What we may not know as well is should accounts payable be going up or down? And uh, so in this case, I would often think about what we received. It might be easier. What did we get? We got merchandise. And merchandise, we can see as an asset. It's up here in the asset section. It's a green account. And uh, we know that assets uh, have debit balances represented by the fact that they do not have brackets. We know that we got more of it. Therefore, it must go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. So that's an asset. I'm going to make it go up by debiting it because it, it's a debit balance account. I'm going to right click on that, copy that account, put our cursor in cell C5, right click, paste it 123. Now, if you paste it over here, it's going to change the content. Pasting 123 means values only. So I'm going to paste just the values. And uh, then the number will be 12,000. Now note that we're in the cell and not on the cell right now. So when we hit enter, it will put in a comma based on the formatting of the cell. So I'm going to hit enter and then it formats it for us. So uh, get used to being in the cell rather than on the cell as we go through the problem. All these transactions or many of them are going to have two accounts. This, this one only has two accounts. So if it only has two accounts, then we're going to need an equal number of credits as debits. I'm going to represent a credit in this case in the credit column, but also with brackets. Excel sees brackets as negative numbers. So I'm going to put a negative 12,000. Notice I don't put brackets and I don't put commas because when I hit enter, it will do that for us based on the formatting of the cell. Then the question is, what will that account be? And we already said that that account will be accounts payable because we didn't pay cash. And now we know that we're going to have to credit that account. Does it make sense that we credit that account? Well, accounts payable has a credit balance based on the fact that it has brackets around it. And we know that it needs to go up. The bad thing needs to go up because we owe people more money. And how do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. And therefore, we're going to credit the credit, which makes the credit go up in the credit direction. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. So let's copy that. I'm going to paste it in cell C6. Right click, paste 123, just the values only. Then I'm going to post this. So there's our journal entry. I'm going to post it to the general ledger. So in order to do that, I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller so we can see more of the general ledger. So hopefully this isn't too small. I'm going to bring it down to 70. And the general ledger is over here. So I'm going to go over here so we can see our journal entry. And we can see more of the GL. The GL is in order. It's just backing up the trial balance for the most part. So it's got our same order, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. I'm looking for merchandise inventory. It's an asset. It should be like the third account. So here it is. One, two three and we know that we're going to debit it it's in the debit side we're on the debit side so i'm in the debit side here i'm in cell s s9 so in s9 we're going to say equals and i'm going to point to it i highly rec recommend not just typing the 12 but putting equals pointing to the cell that we want and then when we hit enter we'll see what happens to the running balance it goes from 243.5 to 255.5 that 255.5 is also seen on the trial balance here. We are now out of balance by the 12,000 here, here, and we're out of balance up here because of that transaction. Now note that uh, the reason I would put that in there in a formula way is because now I can see what has been posted. For example, I can see the formula by using this icon and say, okay, yeah, that got posted. Did this get posted? And say, no, it didn't. That's why we're out of balance. And you can't do that if you just hard code this number over here. If you want to know where these icons are, they are in the uh, formulas tab. They're in the formula auditing. And right here, I just put them on the taskbar for myself. All right. And if you want to do that, you can right click on it and add to the taskbar or the toolbar, I should say. Okay. So then I'm going to go to accounts payable. So accounts payable is over here. Once again, it's in assets and then liabilities. So accounts payables down here. It's the first liability. First liability. I'm in cell X. 14 and in that cell I'm going to hit equals not negative just equals and point to that 12,000 another thing you do not have to worry about over here is putting negative numbers in here because if I hit enter it already puts if it's a credit represented by the negative by the fact that we put the negative over here so that's where you want the negative over here not over here all right and now what does that do it made this change to 1036 which ties out to the 1036 over here and puts us back in balance down here no effect on net income down here 
Now we're not required to do this for this problem because I'll give all the detail not to do this right now, but do want to point out that uh, we see this accounts payable here. We might want to know more detail about that account. For example, the general ledger shows the detail by date. Here's what here's the activity that happened in order of sequence of date. However, we're also going to want to know <laughs> the order of who we need to pay so we can track who who do we owe the money to. And for that, we're going to have subsidiary ledgers. So if I'm going to go to this next tab over here, and we have the subsidiary ledgers on this side. So I'm looking at the accounts payable subsidiary ledger in this case. And if I scroll down, we could see that it's out of balance, meaning all the end numbers here, the accounts payable, who we owe, A company, B company, S company, F company, W company, M company, does not add up to what is on the trial balance. And that's because I'm going to record this transaction again for a company. That's who we bought the information from. I'm going to do it this way. I'm not going to hard code it again. I'm going to use a formula. I'm going to say equals. I'm going to go back to my general journal entries. I'm going to find that transaction, which is over here. Here's the accounts payable. There's the 12. So the 91.6 plus the 12 is the 103.6. If we hit enter, now we owe a company 22.4 according to our backup account and we see that we are now at 103.6 so if I add up all the people that we owe it adds up, it adds up to 103.6 which should tie out to both the general ledger as well as the trial balance. So I'm going to go back to the general journal and we can see the 103.6 here, we can see the 103.6 here. Again you don't need to do that for this particular problem because I'm going to give you all the information here but later on we're going to need to know who to pay obviously and in a computerized system, all this would happen simultaneously, uh, but we're going to do it in pieces so we can see what will happen in this format. All right, so I'm going to make this a bit larger again. I'm going to go back up to 90 in the taskbar. I'm going to pull the tab over here. We're going to go to the next transaction on 4-1. And it says that we sold merchandise to I company, terms 210 in 30. All right, so first, what does 210 in 30 mean? That means that terminology, that format of formatting it will mean that we're going to give a 2% discount if it's paid within 10 days. So if you give us the money sooner, we'll give you this 2% discount on it. Otherwise, we assume to get paid within 30 days. If you don't pay within 30 days, we may have to take collection action in order to uh, receive the money after that point in time. Okay, so we're going to make a sale then. Now, when we think of a sale, First, I'm going to want to think of it in two parts of the sale. So I'm actually going to break the sale up into two separate journal entries that both have a debit and a credit. The first journal entry, we want to think of as if we're a service company. So as if we don't sell inventory, as if we did work and we're going to get paid in the future. So in this case, is cash affected? No, because we're going to get paid sometime in the future. It's kind of like us sending out an invoice. We did receive something. What did we receive? A receivable. We're assuming people owe us money. We think that has value. We'd rather have cash, but we will take the receivable. The receivable has a debit balance. We need to make it go up. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So we're going to right click on that, copy it. We're going to go over here to C8, right click and paste one, two, three. We're going to increase the receivable by, in this case, the sales price, the six, four, not what we bought it for. We're going to sell it for six, four. I'm going to have a credit. Related to that same amount in the credit column, also represented with a negative 64. Enter. And then I'm not, no commas, no uh, anything. The format, when I hit enter, will format the cell with brackets. Then we need to know what will that account be. And again, we're not thinking about inventory. I'm not thinking about inventory right now. We're going to do the inventory next time. The other side of it, if we were a service company, would be income of some kind. So where's our income account? Well, it goes assets, then liabilities, then equity here. The blue is going to break up the balance sheet from the income statement, then income. This account must be income. We can call income whatever we want. Now that we sell things, we call it sales. But we, we could have called it fees earned for a service company. We could just call it income. We could call it revenue. It's an income type account. We can see that by the location that it is in. And income has a credit balance, therefore, uh, and it only goes up. Therefore, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. So I'm going to copy the sales and that will be the credit. Right click and paste one, two, three. So there's the sales half of our transaction here. Now we also have the inventory half of the transaction. So if we think of the inventory, the, the easiest thing for me to think about is that we're giving up inventory. And if I look in the account, where's inventory? It's right here. 
and inventory is an asset. We can see it up here with all the other assets. It has green indicated in assets in this particular worksheet. <laughs> and we need to make it go down because we gave away inventory.